I just pull up in this bitch In a function with my click I stay in a bag Think they ain't on my hip Fucking in a bag I stay with a bitch So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the I won't tell you what floor Oh, hey there, Kieran Hello We'll uh, get back to that later But we had just arrived at the new spot for the next two months. Uh, Pete is actually uh, seeing his family. Kieran is here for five days. Yeah, we're just doing a bunch of work out here. He flew out here. So yeah, Pete will be back in, I think, three days. Uh, and Pete and I are gonna be staying here for the next two months. And yeah, now this place isn't as big as the last one, but I think in a lot of ways I prefer that because the last one was five bedrooms, three floors, there was a cottage. Like, you know, like 90% of the space wasn't used. So I think in a lot of ways I prefer this because this is, I don't know, it feels a little more homely. It's still a three bedroom, so more than enough space. Uh, two bedrooms up there, another bedroom there, living space. Obviously, you know, this is where most of the work will happen, kind of a little lounging area. And uh, yeah, everything just is fitted super well in this place. All the appliances are state of the art. We're exact same thing at the old place, but yeah, all the, all the bedrooms furnished nicely, everything. I don't know, it just looks very, New York bachelor pad esque. I won't bother showing you guys the upstairs because all the bedrooms are, are pretty much the same. Big king size bed. I said, just kind of like the state of the art. So, yeah, it is currently 4 48 in 12 minutes. We have a live QA call with the community. So, Kieran's literally hopped off the plane, had a quick lunch, and then now straight to work. And after that, heading to dinner. And yeah, this is a very uninspired start to a vlog. I don't feel like there's much else to add. So, Let's get into it. I don't know. I mean, it, it, to be quite frank, it's it's a totally different niche. Um, it's not something that's cheap. Do they have some sort of uh, sales process? Like, like what is the goal you're optimizing for? Because quite clearly, you're not going to be running ads and then at the end they're putting their uh, in their credit card information for something that costs ten thousand USD. So, what are you optimizing for? Are you optimizing for calls booked? That's it. You always need to be looking at a number that you are held accountable to and that you're optimizing for. So your your KPI that you're optimizing for isn't CPA, it, it's CPL. And in order for you to understand the upper thresholds of how much you can spend uh, per lead, you need to know once you pass the baton over, what closing percentage do they have? You know, because that tells you, you know, as I said, if it's 800, uh, if they can spend 800 to acquire, if, you know, they only have a 10% close percentage, you want, you know, you're going to want a, a margin of safety. You know, let's say it's 10%, then technically you can spend 80 per lead. But as I said, you want a little margin of safety. So I'd say $70 per lead at that point. Or if it's 25%, then obviously it's 200 um, uh, is the upper threshold where you can spend per lead. But once again, you want a margin of safety. So let's say $180 uh, per lead. So you, do you see what I'm saying here? Yeah. So write long form copy based on that. And that's what I would do. Now, in terms of uh, a, a targeting, I'm not sure. In terms of demographics, as I said, 24 to 34. And in terms of actual the, the, the interest targeting, behavioral targeting, I'm not sure. It would take me a little while to think about that. But that hopefully that points you in the right direction. And as I said, in terms of the copy, do long form and, and ma just make it human to human, not like all these other just horrendous university ads where it's like, I don't know, the university are among some of the worst advertisers on earth. It's, it's actually the funniest shit ever. Um, so just make it human. And as I said, you, you explain what the main benefit is right there. So ladies and gentlemen, just finished up a live Q&A call and dragged, basically I, I kind of hid the suitcases on the side because uh, I wanted it to look all presentable and, and whatnot. But yeah, the place is a mess. So that's that. Kieran has brought me a lot of goodies. I don't know why the hell you brought me my watch case when yeah when you literally brought me one watch but he went ahead and brought me my hulk uh i picked this up i think probably around four months ago and i've worn it maybe four times um jamie my friend jamie who works at rolex always makes fun of me he says that uh i just don't wear a watch unless it's like one of my gold pieces or my patek by the way my patek my Nautilus, i wanted kieran to bring and he refused to bring it because he said it was dumb wearing a 60,000 pound watch, uh, or actually I think market value is around 55,000. Watch market's kind of taken a 15, 20% nosedive in the last, last four or five months actually. But anyways, my point is, I wanted to wear the Nautilus, uh, but he said that would be idiotic because I would get my arm chopped off in Cape Town. First of all, I've been here a month, it's a lot safer than you would imagine. Second, I think this is more, like everyone knows what Submariner is, no one knows here what a Nautilus is. 
in my opinion, but anyways, happy to have this. I've worn this probably four times. You can see, I, I think it's literally just got no, no scratches on it or anything. Worn this four times, uh, this thing gets zero wrist time, but it'll be my only watch. Well, I say my only watch, I've got my Timex Expedition that one of my um, client's boyfriend actually got for me. I also have my Timex Q, uh, incredible, incredible watch, probably my favorite watch under 200 pounds. And then I also have my Apple Watch, and you guys have seen my Apple Watch review video and my thoughts on that. But anyways, I am so happy to have one of my nice watches back on. I'm gonna go ahead and set the time properly and whatnot. But Kieran brought me some more goodies. So I'm here for two months, I'm not messing around. So I got Kieran to bring out all the stops. First things first, I got my Beamer. Now, I really don't wanna get into detail what this thing is, but I can just tell you that REM sleep and deep sleep this accounts for, this gets me, and I have the data to back it up obviously with my O-ring, this gets me around 25% more REM and deep sleep. I get around two hours REM and two hours deep on average a night without this thing and kind of like, and kind of, you know, with my sleepy time tea, making sure that I'm following my routine and whatnot. Uh, but with this thing, I get around two and a half hours of REM and deep sleep. So just putting it out there, I am, in my opinion, the undisputed champion of sleep. But Next thing is actually a gift for Pete. It is a portable SSD. Now he edits on his Lacey. I edit all my stuff on my computer because I have a two terabyte spec'd out 20, 2019 or 2020. I don't know, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the latest one, but he edits on the Lacey. So I'm getting a little technical here, but that the Lacey has write speeds of 150 megabytes per second, I believe. This has 500. So this is three times as fast and he's editing 4K for example, like this 4K footage. The computer, I believe, has the write speeds of 1.5 or two gigs. So obviously the fastest thing to do is edit on your computer, but not everyone has the space in order to do so. So yeah, I edit on my computer because it's the fastest thing. Pete edits on his Lacey, which as I said, is around probably one-tenth the speed of the computer. This pretty much is all you need if you're editing 4K footage. So yeah, that is that. Let's move on to the next thing. Uh, this is just a little cable for my Blue Yeti, which I forgot to bring. He, I got Kieran to bring me my sleepy time tea. Now, any of you guys having trouble with sleep, go ahead and get this. It is the Sweet Dreams from T2. This is, what is this? Okay, this is some Chanel, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had someone actually ask me on one of my Q&As, what do I use? And trust me, gents, this is the best. Uh, actually, no. <laughs> Shit, everyone's gonna smell like me, but. Um, <laughs> But trust me, like I've tried a bunch of different clones out there. This isn't as musky as a Tom Ford Tuscan leather, but it's also not as sweet as a Hollister. It's still pretty musky, so you're not smelling like a girl, and you're also not smelling like a six-year-old. I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Is that too much? Should I cut that out? Can't say that. Can't say that. No. Are you sure? You can't say that. No. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. Yes. This is true. You can't say. <laughs> Just no, just. And it's also not a 20 pound cologne, but it's also not, you know, Clive Christian territory. So all in all, I tried to find this thing here. They said it was, in their own words, too expensive. So yeah, they didn't stock this. So I got Kieran to bring this over. Go, go, go ahead and give everyone your discount code. I wish I had that. <laughs> Next thing is, oh, I have missed these babies. This isn't actually the company that makes them. Um, and I've had a ton of people ask me what company makes them and I'm not gonna tell you. The reason I'm not gonna tell you is because I actually used to use these um, and they're like 35 pounds, they're a little flimsy though and everyone started wearing them and guys, to be honest, there's certain stuff with my style that I like to keep my style but these are my blue light blockers. I've missed these so much. I haven't had any blue light blockers out here. Uh, Kindle, don't tell Pete, but I guess he'll see this in editing. Actually, he'll already have it by now, but this is a gift for him. This is my Amex, which obviously I'm not gonna show you, but um, my Amex gold card, as you guys know, I think I mentioned on another video, I'm just gonna sit down. Uh, I think I mentioned in another video that I have a platinum card for the business. This is a uh, gold card for me personally to build out my credit. So that goes there. Is there anything else fun in here? Ah, yes, this. This is for the Sony a7R 3 that I have. Uh, this is for basically just to charge the batteries because I remember the port, the little, the little station thing, but I forgot this. So on to this, which is a teapot for the loose leaf tea. Loose oh, you'll like this. Pick this out specially. Woo! Woo, flames. Flames. This is, a, this is a good size. 
this is a good size. I like this. Do, do, do you want to rifle through my luggage? Deep heat patches. Flyness. They're quite cool. I do like flyness. Yeah, I have a pair of those. Some lidocaine. What does that do? So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little story about his Swiss Army knife. We're going to Nepal and we have a layover in Doha and like we get stopped. They, we get stopped and I'm like, I don't know, he's probably an idiot and has some like hand cream or something that's over the limit. But they pull out a Swiss Army knife in Doha and they're like, sir, you know you're not allowed this because this, this thing's like a, a proper weapon. His Swiss Army knife and they're like, sir. And at this point I'm like, and then they were like, sir, can you stay here? And at this point I'm like, oh shit, Kieran's not joining us in Nepal. Like he's, I mean, look at this thing. <laughs> This is a proper weapon. Uh, I'm like, at this point, I genuinely thought, I was like, okay, you know, we're going to Nepal without Kieran. They come back and they're like, sir, we're gonna have to confiscate this. I was expecting confiscate this and confiscate your your liberty. So um, yeah, turns out they just took it away. And the funniest thing is when we got to Nepal, he had another one. <laughs> so that's this. So I don't know why you carry around so many Swiss army knives, but I'll show you this. Wow, if only you had something to open it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so kind of them. They actually gave a battery with. It's a battery for it. I think that's a strap. So what this is, is a, I am now a member of the Leica Club, uh, but with no lens. I went through the entire box. There was no lens. That this, was literally the wasn't it? This is a big issue then. This is a very big issue. Well guys, you've seen my live reaction of what it's like to get a Leica M6, but have no lens to shoot it with. Here's my new Leica M6. Someone's getting fired. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is my Leica M6. As you guys know, I think I'd, I have my Contax T3. I have my Nikon FM, which I picked up here. And this is basically like, in my opinion, for 35 millimeter film, uh, this is the Holy Grail. Well, I say in my, it is, it's the holy grail. This and the MP, but the MP is the more modern version. I think this was discontinued in 2007 or eight. And this is the TTL, uh, which kind of this and the, the M6 and the TTL, it's just kind of the same thing anyways, whatever, in my humble opinion. Um, but I went for this over the M7. They had an M7 for 300 pound cheaper, but I went for this because, uh, I mean, it's, let me look at it. It's like black, it's stealthy, it's so beautiful. Like this is, in my opinion, just the most gorgeous. Like is just in, in general, just the most gorgeous cameras ever created. But I was so excited to shoot on this thing, but Kieran's definitely getting fired because I know, because I've been to all of the film stores here, that there is not a single place we're gonna be able to find a Leica lens. It's off season here, they're not really stocking any, so this is a muy grande issue. Very, very, very big issue. <laughs> all right, so. That is pretty much it. I'm gonna turn off the camera, shout at Kieran. I uh, won't let you guys see that, so catch you in the next clip. So just sat here doing some work with Kieran and uh, got a team call in three minutes, but was going back trying to find some, just trying to find a document in, in my old archives. It's, it's, it's so funny. Sometimes I just find stuff that just, just sends me on a throwback to when I first started my agency. So this is one of my proposals. I actually used to make all my proposals in Canva. <laughs> as you can see by the quite obvious temp. Actually, wait, no, I think I made it in pages. No, I think I, yeah, no, I think I made it in pages. I think I found this as like, um, as an image. Yeah, I definitely made this in pages. Anyways, my point is that, uh, yeah, this is a proposal I sent to a company called Skin Yoga. We were in talks and uh, you can see here, Instagram content distribution and account management, 150. And then for account management and content creation, so an extra 150 pounds a week to actually curate the content. You can see right there, this is a proposal. Uh, and then I end it off and I say, uh, I would like to remind you that December is the busiest month to grow for an Instagram page out of the whole year. We could really get the ball rolling in December as well as campaign for 2017. Let's build momentum on our social media so you can have the best fourth quarter in the whole of the company history. So I actually sent this, I remember it's probably around October, 2016. Now, I got my first agency client August of 2016. It was my old football club for 75 pounds a week. So 300 pounds a month. And for that, I was doing 30 Instagram posts, 30 Facebook posts, and also curating all that content as well, and four YouTube videos. But um, it took me six months of sending out proposals like this, reaching out to clients until I got my second client, and that was Athlete for 1,900 pounds a month retainer. Athlete is actually now rebranded to Genflow. And the part of that that I love so much is the fact that 
obviously they used to be a client of mine and then now I'm a client of theirs. They actually help some of the biggest influencers on earth build out their info product. They have all the operations in place for that. They also do that for physical products, which is kind of their, their go-to these days. So they're actually the ones that help with the logistical side and the fulfillment of the gadget clothing line. That's why that company runs so smoothly. People have their tracking numbers. And you know, there's so many nightmares that can go on with having a clothing line that we were able to mitigate by bringing them in to do that. And as I said, it's just this really cool full circle story. Sean, who's the CEO and founder, just has so much respect for that guy. We would spend a lot of time together and as I said, just so, so much respect for that guy. One of the best businessmen I've ever met in my entire life and I've met a lot. So anyways, the point of just showing you guys this is like, first of all, for me, cause it's kind of special to look back at this. This is three and a half years ago. This year will be my fourth anniversary of signing my first agency client. I've been in this game a decent amount of time. I've been through every single trial, every single tribulation. I've had a creative agency. I've had a blend, sort of a full service agency. Now I have just an advertising agency. I've fallen, I've scraped my knees. I've, you know, I've kind of been through the ringer. And all I can say is for those of you guys right now who are trying to get your first client, or maybe you have one client, or or things are just getting a little tough. Like, trust me, that wasn't enjoyable. Sending out these proposals and just getting no response and, and having deals fall through, like that was excruciating for me at the beginning. But now three and a half years later, being able to look at stuff like that is just, yeah, it just puts the biggest, biggest smile on my face. So guys, just about to hop on a call with a client uh, that I had a call with on Friday. Um, now, I always say that, you know, unless you close the client on the call, just in your mind mentally assume that they're they're not paying now there are certain occasions where yes they need to talk to a business partner etc cetera, etc cetera. and for those of you guys in agency incubator you guys know the way that i actually circumvent that and you guys know that if there's a business partner involved the way that i navigate it and make sure that it's still pretty much closed even if one business partner is bought in and the other one obviously has no idea of the service but nonetheless i still like to assume that unless you close on the call they're not closing as a client but just have a 15 minute follow-up call with a client that i came to an agreement with on friday for 5200 pounds which i think is around 6500 dollars per month so I have the follow-up call now with all three of the business partners. There was only two present last time. And what I will say is that both other business partners said that even if the other business partner said no, they just override his decision and do it either way because they were that bought in. So I'm gonna go ahead and say I'm 80% sure that this is a close. But as I said, in my mind, there's always that air of unless they close on the call, it's not happening. Anyways, let's hop on the call. Let's build them that first payment of 5,200 pounds, send them the onboarding link for the agency and uh, yeah, lock in another client. I'm tired. I don't understand how tired I am. I, I do. We have the exact same sleep school. <laughs> With Dre, right? You sent over the video. So, we actually talked to Dre last night. We went ahead and spoke with him about everything, about everything we'll be doing. He didn't have time to look at the call, but um, we went ahead and broke down everything you'll be doing. Um, he sounded he sound really ecstatic about getting this started, about you know making everything happen. We did have a couple of other offers from other competitors that were, you know, cheaper, but there's a reason you charge so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it's pretty obvious. And so like the, the best, like in our industry, the best isn't always the cheapest, mm -hmm. right? Like maybe if you're buying a bottle of water, it might be better to go with the cheaper option. But when it comes to a service, it's, it's typically better to pay for more. So yeah, I mean, um, I mean, why, what phone do you guys have? Uh, I got an iPhone 10s. Yeah, 10. Yeah, well, iPhone, I mean, we all, you know, we all know iPhones are pretty damn expensive. My question is, you know, why didn't you guys buy a Nokia? Yeah. <laughs> exactly that. So, yeah, I, yeah. I can't agree with so, you more there. No, so, I mean, the way it works is obviously, well, first of all, you know, welcome to IAG Media. Very yeah. excited to work with you guys. So, obviously, today we'll go ahead and we'll process the payment and I'll send you guys the onboarding link. Like, are you running ads in that format or are you so, just gonna be running copy or what? So we, uh, so yeah, you have to have a, you have to have a, a, a photo. So even if you look at my stuff, it's 90% photo text-based. Um, like we, you know, we've gotten the best results for our clients with, with just photo and text. So I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm under no, um, I, I have no doubts that you guys have just a bunch of photos. And you know uh, the, the photos don't have to be you know shot on a five five you know five thousand uh, dollar you know A seven R three. They can literally be shot with your iPhone. I would doubt that it would cost more than maybe even fifty dollars to be honest in the first month. So you know with that being said, you're 
gang booked in around 40 calls. Awesome. Did you get it? Perfect. And uh, what else? That is it. Stay on the line. We'll go ahead and process the payment now. Yeah, if you could send it through email. Um, what yeah, we're can you send us like a contract and everything? Like, yeah, that's the thing because we're because Jay wasn't able to get on the call again as well. So what we're gonna do is go over the contract with Jay because he's putting in on this payment as well. So we're gonna go over that with him and then pay from there. I mean, if you want to, I mean, what's the sort of apprehension? No, it's it, it, it's not it's not yeah. you, you know I, I on on our first initial call like I, I told you guys up front I was like hey look you mind if I skip the the salesy stuff because you guys yeah, yeah, of course, you know of course. so nah, we're, it, we're you know we're definitely gonna get on board we just need you know to go over the contract with Dre so we can you know just process everything yeah because we're three and right now like we're we're like we were good at, we were supposed to be together by today already but um like. My home is in like Palm Beach. He lives like down in Miami, and we're all gonna fly out to New York like today and meet up. Um, and you know, like we're gonna, you know, like, we're actually serious about this. We're gonna get started. But um, yeah, with that being said, we just need like the contract just so we can go over like the final details, and you know, we're gonna get started from that. So exactly as I said, um, very weird. They wanted to like look over the contract and stuff. Which is that's the problem with dealing with multiple businesses. Which is yeah. yeah, I guess yeah. Because I mean, to be honest, like literally, we've had clients sign fifteen thousand pound a month retainers and like not request to look at the contract because it's like I don't know, like yeah, I don't know. it's just it's something that's legitimately never come up because um, obviously they pay and then after that they get the onboarding link and then the onboarding funnel and then part of that is they sign a contract using HelloSign, but once again, you can use. I think Panda Doc or Panda, you know, one of, the, one of these electronic contract softwares. Um, so yeah, the, it was weird. A part of me was like, uh, th that's why I said like, you know, there's that chance that they don't close. So I thought the closing maybe like, oh, maybe the business partner like really was against it, but the part, uh, business partner said he's super enthusiastic about it. Um, but yeah, you know, so that, that's kind of the annoying thing about having multiple people involved. Um, but I got a call with them at, 415 Cape Town time tomorrow and that will lock it in uh, hopefully and if they don't lock in then obviously you know I'll know that they're not being serious um, so everything so far kind of like the the stalls because usually for me it's a one call close you know to get to the second sort of follow-up 15 minute call and then now a third call that rarely ever happens for me but you know everything has been valid so far and it stems from the fact that there's not one person in charge, not two, but three. Uh, so I'll call with them 4.15 tomorrow. And I also got another very, very promising call tomorrow at 7.15. Uh, and that is with this really, really cool software company that I'd be very, very happy if I match close because yeah, I just, I just think they're super dope. But anyways, there you go. There's real life of being an agency owner, which is you don't always get the outcome that you want, but hopefully tomorrow I can uh, lock it in, even though it took longer than I normally like. All right, so it is one day since I picked up the camera and the situation is literally exactly the same. Uh, we basically haven't moved because to be honest, you know, after that last clip, uh, worked for three, four more hours, was in bed by 9.30 and just been working all day since. So nothing really that eventful, but now I have the follow-up call to yesterday's follow-up call. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. All right, so as it stands, they are seven minutes late so just went ahead and followed up so i'll stay on the call maybe seven eight more minutes and then wrap it up there all right so it's been 15 minutes gonna end it up there um yeah not entirely sure what happened i'm sure there is a viable reason uh obviously like a client's never just not gonna show up and not tell you um or at least at this stage of the sales process. Uh, so I'm sure there must be a, a very viable reason, but obviously this once again is just another sign in my opinion that the client is less likely to actually come on board. So from their side, it's looking less likely. And then obviously from my side, it leaves, I'm at a point in my agency where unless it's a hundred percent match, I don't take clients on. And this is almost leaving a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth where I'm even starting to reassess, is this client worth taking on? Are they gonna be those sorts of clients where they ask too many questions and don't just let us 
do our thing and get the results. But yeah, anyway, so that's that. I got another call in two hours and 45 minutes, another sales call. So hopefully with that, we can return to good old Lehman and just one call close. Yeah, I changed up. I'm a new me. Ain't no kind of money finna woo me. Smack you if I see you wearing Gucci. I've been doing good though. I know you ain't asking. You really wanna throw shade? I know all about that. I know. So. There's a combination of things. First of all, I was totally off on the sales call. Second, he wouldn't have been a good fit for the agency anyways, both from a business and a. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you noticed that I was getting really excited to go to Concentric Land for like the 12th time and I was saying something and then the audio cut and basically my Sony A7R 3 which I shoot with is uh, kind of messed, just the, the audio is messed up, apparently it's a very common issue that happens when you just keep the, you know, because most of the time, well pretty much this entire trip, we've literally just kept the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, which is such a funny name, I don't know why they call it that, but um, yeah, the Pro Plus, we just keep that into the uh, microphone input, and apparently it's a very common thing where when that happens, uh, it just kind of wears against the audio input, and that kind of messes with the system. So, that's really, really annoying, because that means that I basically can't shoot, I can shoot sit-down stuff, but then now we're going to have to record to an external source, or have pull in an external source from, from some manner. Um, anyways, long story short, this camera is basically broken. Uh, so we're going to have to find a way to get it repaired, um, which here in South Africa, that's basically impossible. Uh, or basically just going to have to buy a new camera. And this is really also annoying because either way I was going to get the A7S III. Uh, whenever that comes out, this has been meaning to come out for like two years at this point. Um, so yeah, whenever the hell that actually comes out, I was going to pick that up regardless, even though my A7R III was working and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, I don't know, just, I haven't had a lot of luck with equipment recently, you know. My Leica lens getting lost somewhere, still trying to figure that out. Now, my A7R III, like, I mean, you know, I got pretty much in camera equipment. I got, like, 20-odd thousand pounds in camera equipment. Creating content is very, very expensive. Uh, it can be very cheap. Obviously, you can just do it with your iPhone and whatnot. But if you want to make good quality content, if you want good mics, if you want um, good lenses, the lens, on there, the lens on this right now is 2,000 pounds. Got another 2,000 pound lens, heat lens here. Got another 2,000 pound lens in there. The camera itself is 3,000 pounds. Um, uh, you know, this is two and a half grand, uh, the lens for is 1500, the contacts I have is freaking two grand, it, it's, it's very expensive, it's very expensive, there's certain stuff I do that is very expensive, like my watch hobby and creating content, very, very expensive stuff to do. And on that note, I spent more money right this morning, and I didn't even know my ASMR 3 was broken at that point, but yeah, I got some LED panels, um, it was like 600 pounds because the lighting in here is just not very, not very good to be honest. Uh, and then what else I got was this. I got the Rode Caster Pro. Uh, with that, it was like this whole set. It came with like two mics, a boom pole, and some other stuff. Um, yeah, some other cables and whatnot. Um, so you might be wondering at this point, and what, but once again, I apologize for the terrible audio. The reason that the audio is terrible is basically we're having to use the inbuilt um, audio. So yeah, I think we're gonna start shooting all the vlogs with the A6500 that uh, Pete's got, um, and just use the A7R3 for the sit down and stuff. But anyways, you might be wondering, Iman, why do you have uh, a podcast? Basically what this thing was, I think cost like a thousand pounds, which I thought was super cheap, but for this entire setup, um, it's basically just a podcasting system and it's like super cheap, super easy to use, etc, etc. And you might be wondering, Iman, why do you have a podcasting system when you don't have a podcast? And you would assume that this would be my leeway into telling you, guys, I'm a very proud and very happy to announce the Private Victories podcast. But you'd be wrong because I'm not announcing it and it's not happening or at least yet. Kieran has been all over my dick for like six months, probably a year at this point, telling me, start a podcast, start a podcast, start a podcast, start a podcast, and it's just, yeah. It's something that like, I don't know, I, 
I'm thinking it's a distraction. I don't know if I want to do it. I still picked up the set either way, just just in case. Um, slash, to be honest, I just think it's it's useful to have anyways. Um, yeah, I left my Rode Podcaster setup in London, so here I just have my Blue Yeti. Um, but I have a system similar to that, um, obviously not for podcasting, that one's just a USB, so that plugs straight into my computer with the boom and stuff like that, but I left that one. Anyways, if you guys want me to create a podcast in 2020, let me know. And the reason I've been apprehensive about it is because I don't want to do a podcast in like over Zoom or over Skype. You know, I don't want it to be a remote podcast. I want like a proper studio. Like I'm talking like impulsive, you know, Logan Paul's podcast. I'm talking impulsive or True Jordy. If you, if you guys have ever seen True, uh, the True Jordy podcast, like a legit space, like a studio. And it would be not just, not only myself, it would be myself and Kieran and a guest. And the guests wouldn't be all to do with digital marketing and whatnot. You know, I want to get, I want to get all my podcasts. I'm thinking like for some of the first few guests, um, I want to get my friend uh, George. So Jordan, he's a, he's a rapper, he's an artist. Um, I want to get him on. Uh, I want to get my friend uh, Charlie, Charlie Fredericks. Uh, he was on Love Island 2019. I think that would be like a really funny, interesting podcast. Uh, on, I want to get like some of my friends who own like nightclubs in London. Man, this really just ended my day. I want to get some of my friends who own like nightclubs in London. I want to get some of my friends who are literally in the hundreds of millions from their real estate portfolios. Like a lot of people that like either just have very interesting stories. I want to get some of my old clients on because it feels like that would be a really interesting perspective. Like this is just going to be another digital marketing podcast. Obviously, the, if I create this podcast, it's going to be the Private Victories podcast. It's always going to be entrepreneurship based. But as I said, I don't want it to just be some other lame podcast. So by the level of enthusiasm that you give me in the comment section, I will decide. If it's a go ahead, then I'm going to go ahead and shoot the first episode here. See if I can get some sort of interesting guests out here. I don't really know who's in South Africa, to be honest. And then if it goes well, then when I'm back in London, then I'll obviously I'll get the first three, four guests on for that. So yeah, let me know if it's something you guys want to see. As I said, like if I do it, I want to do it right. And if I do it, I think I'm actually going to get an office in London. Slash, I say an office, but basically I'll, I'll get like a two, three bedroom apartment and make that into an office. From a legal perspective, just as long as the landlord is informed and whatnot, that's totally fine. So no issues there. But as I said, it will be like a legitimate like podcast studio. I want to do all of the podcasts in person. Kieran and I had this idea for he'd be drinking a glass of his favorite drink. I'd be drinking a glass of my favorite drink. Or just that would just kind of be some... slightly but anyways my point is that we would ask the guests before the podcast what drink they would want so if they want a really hard to get ball of wine doesn't matter we're gonna get it if they want a specific cognac if they want a specific whiskey if they want a specific mineral water it doesn't matter we get it for them and then Kira and I would both have our drinks whether that be matcha a glass of wine a glass of whiskey I'm thinking kind of leather couch chairs like I, as I said, I want it to literally be everything except for just a nerdy digital marketing podcast because the thing is, Kieran and I, we're digital marketing nerds anyways, so like no matter what, that's going to come through and the entrepreneurial aspect is going to come through, but I want to have the environment set up so we talk about stuff that's not really talked about on YouTube, get really deep, and the reason I want to do it with Kieran is because as much as I have a good perception of myself, to be honest, I don't think people would really want to listen to me for like two hours. Like I'm not... I'm not genuinely not really that interesting and also I know me I know I wouldn't take the time to do a ton of research about the guests and whatnot whereas Kieran I know he would have show notes and he'd bring up something that the guest did like seven years ago that everyone forgot about not to like oust them out or, or bring up an article or a song they wrote like you know three years ago that like no one really knows about or like discuss some thing that happened in their childhood that they would have to go on this huge like website trail go to like the extreme edges of the internet to find you guys hopefully should kind of get an idea of what I would want for this podcast. So my point is, it would be a financial investment, it would be a time investment, 
but I also think it'd be a good sort of entry point for a lot of people to find out about myself, about my agency, IG Media, to find out about Gadget, my clothing line, to find out about the education company, Grow Agency. Because at the end of the day, I think, at least in the business online space, I have, I don't know, I think top 10, at least agency specific YouTube channels. I know 100% I have the biggest agency specific YouTube channel that I know for sure. But yeah, kind of in the entrepreneurship space, like if you have a channel about entrepreneurship, finances, stuff like that, and you have a hundred thousand or above, like that's you. Whereas for other industries, other niches, like that's, that's a tiny amount. So it's a very small sort of niche, it's a very small sort of market, the digital marketing, online entrepreneurship, that sort of space. So I said, it'd be kind of interesting to, to reach a larger audience, but I'm rambling now. I want to go ahead and thank you guys for watching this vlog. I want to wrap it up here. So I said, if you guys want to see a podcast in 2020 done properly, video and audio in the studio, leather couches, that's kind of how I'm envisioning it. Interesting guests, guests that you really wouldn't expect a digital marketing online entrepreneurship podcast to have. Let me know and we can make it happen. Working with someone else on a couple of these. What do you really think of the nigga that's making your beat? I've done things.